Okay, so let's talk about negating grips and breaking grips. From our position, just stay there, bro. Let me just check up here. Perfect. Stand up. Nice. Okay, so say from a standing position, uh, and we're sparring, and Tyrone makes the grip. Okay, it's easy for me to get two hands, rotate. Um, Jerome's knuckles pointing up, hold his wrist in place, and now I can move my body back. Notice the way I moved away from him. So from there, I, I made the grip, and I can create distance between Jerome and me. Okay? Maybe if he made a cross grip on this side, I can make a grip on him. Just a second. And then I can make a grip on my own lapel, and now I can rip this back. But notice the way I'm moving away from Jerome. And then I'm in that two on one, and I can start to work my takedowns and stuff. The problem is, um, say I'm in a supine position, and we're here, okay. And Tyrone has made an upper body grip on me, and he's got the pants. For me now to break this grip, it would be very, very difficult because um, I physically can't move my body backwards because the mat's occupying that space. So um, the rule of thumb is, if he makes upper body grips on me, I'm negating them. And if he makes lower body grips on me, I'm breaking them. Let's talk about negating. That means I don't break the grip. I control it. And then from the position, I can get inside control of my foot. And now I can put in a shallow lasso. So now if Tyrone tries to pass my guard, I can keep him at distance. Because that's what guard retention is all about. And possibly from there, I still have negated that grip your grip if possible and then he starts to cut the angle and then I'll take my foot this way now he wants to close the space and now from our position I have the, the sweep so again one more time on that so I'm in a supine position and Tyrone makes grips on me and he's ready to start initiating his passing if he has upper body grips I'm not trying to physically break them because I can't move backwards I can just find the sleeve we find this sleeve, foot on the hip, and then I can tip out, put in a shallow lasso, and then I'll just wait on what he does. He wants to cut an angle to get past my center line. Now he's not going to close that space and get up to the sideline. So now from that position, he still has the grip. I've negated it. And I'm coming up on the top. Um, if he makes the lower body grips from suit line position, from here, both fight grips it's very easy for me to get sleeve control and then i can just kind of kick that leg off and then put in a hook or a foot so again anytime he has made lower body grips um it's going to be very easy for me to keep control of his wrist blur my knee out and then i can get inside control and start playing the game if we are in a seated guard position and um he rolls on his knees <coughs> again from this position He's made this. I do have a wee bit more room to move back, but again, this can be difficult and we want to be taking the path of least resistance. <clears throat> so from there, I can find grips, put my back on the mat, and again, I'll be throwing in a shallow lasso. And again, I'm, I'm negating this. I'm not actually trying to break it. Um, from a seated guard position again, here, and he's made this and he's made that. That's going to be a very easy grip to break, just peeling it off and finding it foot on the hip and then I can start to play the whole game again. So bottom line is, or a rule of thumb, if he's made upper body grips and I am playing guard either flat on my back or in a seated position, I am negating them. And if he makes pant grips, lower body grips, I'm breaking them. <coughs>